reader, this little book is designed to tell you everything you need to know about the science of getting ahead. Now, let us assume you are young, healthy, clear-eyed, and eager, anxious to rise quickly and easily to the top of the business world. You can. I can. If you have education and intelligence and ability, so much the better. But remember that thousands have reached the top without any of these qualities. Just have courage and memorize the simple rules in the chapters that follow. If you truly wish to be among the lucky golden few, you can. I can. How to apply for a job. How to select me to lunch with. How to sit down at a desk. How to dictate memorandums. How to develop executive style. How to commute in a three button suit with that weary executive smile. This book is all that I need. How to, how to succeed. How to observe personnel. How to select them to lunch with. How to avoid petty friends. How to begin making contact. How to... How to choose the right company. Before applying for a job, make sure you have chosen the right company. It is essential that the company be a big one. It should be at least big enough so that nobody knows exactly what anyone else is doing. Say, Joe, I've got a complaint from our dealers in Cleveland about the shipment of wickets from last week. Turns out, they only got about half of them. They ordered 300,000. I know, Mr. Gatch, but they wanted two-toned wickets, and we ran out. Ran out? What is this, a hot dog stand? Look, we are the World Wide Wicket Company. We're supposed to be the single largest producers of wickets in the whole world. <laughs> Take it easy, Mr. Gatch. There was trouble at our eastern plant, a breakdown. Well, get on the ball. I want to keep Cleveland wicket-minded. Yes, sir. Oh, Mr. Matthews, any news about the breakdown? Oh, I'm feeling much better now. <laughs> Say, Tackleberry, did you get my memo? Um, what memo? My memo about memos. We're sending out too many memos, and it has to stop. All right, I'll send out a memo. <laughs> the right company! This book is all that I need. How to, how to succeed. Never mind, never mind. Back to work, everybody. I said back to work! <laughs> I'm sorry I bumped into you, sir, but I would like to apply for a job. A job? Do you know who I am? No, sir. I'm J.B. Bigley. I'm president of this company. That's who I am. In fact, that's who the hell I am. How dare you come to me for a job? I'm sorry, sir. Why do you think I have a whole personnel, man? Why do you think I have a whole damn personnel department? Son bumped into the wrong man. Go burning the ring, ding, ding, ding. I'm sorry. I know how hard it is to find a job. I've been through that kind of thing myself. Well, thank you. Uh, could you tell me where the personnel office is? Personnel? Uh, it's right there. Oh, thank you. Uh, you're not discouraged? Of course not. I'm prepared for exactly this sort of thing. Uh, say, my friend Smitty works in personnel. Uh, maybe she can help you. Uh, Wait, here. Ma'am, it's really not that... Uh... Ow. Sometimes you get <coughs> To see the personnel manager. Well, I'm the personnel manager, and we're not hiring anyone today. I was just speaking to Mr. Bigley. Bigley? J.B. Bigley himself, you were speaking to him? Uh, yes, sir. S is he a friend of yours? Sir, I don't believe a man should trade on friendship to get a job. That's very well put, young man. Well, if you'll step into my office, I think we can work something out. My name is Brett, and you are? Uh, Finch, sir. Pierpont Finch. Pierpont Finch. Maybe that ought to be J. Pierpont Finch. <laughs> As a matter of fact, sir, it, it is. Well, let's step into my office. Brief, Rosemary, you could at least have let me finish my Metrical. Please, Smitty, this is important. I know you can help this boy. But where is he? How would I know? Oh, 
he must have gone to Mr. Rat's office. Uh, well, you go in there. You're Mr. Rat's secretary. He'll listen to you. But why this frantic, urgent urgency? Uh, please, Spitty, we've got to help this boy. But why? Fill me in, girl. <laughs> Wherefore is this creep different from all other creeps? He's not a creep, Spinny. He has a sort of noble courage, and yet deep down I feel he's sort of helpless. Rosemary, your mother instinct is a big drag. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all settled. Glad to have you aboard, Finch. Thank you. I'm happy to teach about with you, sir. Who is that? That's my helpless friend. Isn't he adorable? <laughs> adorable, maybe. Helpless? No. Oh, shut up, Smitty. I just hope he hasn't got a girl. Now, my secretary will take care of the forms and getting your particulars. Smitty, this is our new Mr. Finch. Hello there. How do you do? My name's Pilkington. Rosemary Pilkington. Well, nice to meet you. Hi. <laughs> now, Finch will be starting in the mailroom. Glad you don't mind that, Finch. Sir, in a big pond like this, everyone must start out as a little fish. Even a barracuda. Now, Smitty, will you? <laughs> Say, bud, have you men in the mailroom sent out those wicked catalogs yet? I don't know. I'm going to lunch. Wait, at 11 o'clock? Why? Because I'm the boss's nephew. Oh, bud, this is bud from Mr. Bigley's nephew. Bud, this is Mr. Finch. He'll be working with you in the mailroom. How do you do, Finch? I'm Bud Frump, J.B. Bigley's nephew. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Smitty, get Finch's particulars. Yes, sir. Finch, glad to have you on our team. Happy to ship out with you, sir. Finch, you ambitious? Not necessarily. Good. Just keep that in mind. If you just remember who you are, and remember who I am, we'll get along just fine. If not... You'll go crying to your uncle. I beg your pardon. I do not go crying to my uncle. <laughs> It just so happens that my mother is Mrs. Bigley's sister. If I feel anything is wrong, I phone my mother, she phones Mrs. Bigley, and Mrs. Bigley phones Mr. Bigley. That's the democratic way. <sighs> Mr. Finch, a man like you does not have to worry about a man like him. Uh, Smitty, you were going to get Mr. Finch's oh, particulars? Yes, particulars. Now, Mr. Finch, the first question. Have you got a girl? A girl? Uh no. Good. I mean, that's the right answer. Well, I mean, it's wise not to have a girl. <laughs> I'm glad you understand, Miss Pilkington. You see, in the world of business, when a man wants to rise, a girl, or let's say, an emotional involvement can only lead to getting involved emotionally. Uh, that's very intelligent, Mr. Finch. Yes. Uh, Rosemary, are you through with Mr. Finch? For the moment. <laughs> Fine. Now, if you'll just step into my office, we'll get our business done. Uh, good luck, Mr. Finch. Thank you, Miss... Pilkington. Rosemary Pilkington. Happy to be aboard. Well, Rosemary, you see? I think he's fascinating. Oh, I've seen some ambitious characters around here, but this boy is the eagerest beaver of them all. New Rochelle. Huh? Or maybe White Plains. No? New Rochelle. What are you talking about? New Rochelle. What about it? That's the place where the mansion will be For me and the darling bright young man I've picked out for marrying me He'll do well, I can tell So it isn't a moment too soon To plan on my life in New Rochelle The wife of my darling tycoon. Honey, you'll be a new Rochelle. Your darling tycoon will be here in the office. Smitty, I... The future Mrs. Finch is in for some lonely nights. Well, I'm prepared for exactly that sort of thing. New Rochelle, or maybe Levittown, or New Haven. No. I'll be so happy to keep his dinner warm while he goes onward and upward. <laughs> happy to keep his dinner warm till he comes wearily home from downtown. I'll be there waiting until his mind is clear while he looks through me, right through me, waiting to say good evening, dear. I'm pregnant. What's new with you from downtown? Oh, to be loved by a man I respect, to bask in the glow 
of his perfectly understandable neglect. Oh, to be long in the aura of his frown. Darling, busy frown, such heaven, wearing the wifely uniform while he goes onward and upward. <laughs> Happy to keep his dinner warm till he comes wearily home from downtown. Excuse me! Excuse me! I am the bosses, not you! Excuse me! Out of my way! There's no coffee! No coffee? No coffee! No coffee! <laughs> Take my coffee break. Something within me dies. Lies down and something within me dies. If I can't make three daily trips, wear shining shrine, be nine drips, and taste cardboard between my lips. Something within me dies. Lies down and something. No coffee, no coffee, no coffee. That office light doesn't have to be fluorescent. I'll get no pains in the head. That office chair doesn't have to be full rubber. So if I spread, so I spread, but only one chemical substance gets out the lead. Like she said, if I can't take my coffee break, my coffee break, my coffee break, if I can't take my coffee break, gone is the sense of enterprise, all gone, and something within me dies. <laughs> If I can't take my coffee break Somehow the soul no longer tries Somewhere I don't metabolize Something within me Coffee or otherwise Coffee or otherwise Coffee or otherwise Something inside of me What's that? A coffee pot. Coffee? <laughs> you have alertly seized your opportunities and are now on the first rung of the ladder. You are working in the mail room. One word of caution about the mail room. It is a place out of which you must get. Some of your rivals will not have the advantage of this knowledge. But you are forearmed. Do not get stuck in the mailroom. Plan to rise. Finch, where are you going? What have you got there? Uh, it's the executive mail. I'll take that. Trying to get good on the inside, huh? I can't even take a coffee break around here. I'm just trying to do my job. The executive mail is my job, Finch. If you've got any ideas of climbing a ladder around here, the view is going to get awfully monotonous. Every time you look up, you'll see the seat of my pants. Oh. <laughs> you know, that is 
just rotten, rotten. You know, Bud Frump is just jealous of you. He's trying to keep the big executives from noticing you. Well, uh, thank you for defending news, Pilkington. Uh, please, call me Rosemary. Okay, Rosemary. Now, Mr. Finch. Uh, call me Ponty. Okay, Ponty. The big executives will notice you. Just be patient. Patient? Don't you realize I've been working here one whole week? I know, Ponty. I haven't forgotten. Happy anniversary. Well, at least you noticed me. I wish I were an executive. I... Oh, no. No, what? here comes Judith Anderson. Miss Jones, Mr. Bigley's secretary. I'd better look busy, and you too. Uh, pardon me, ma'am, but I believe you should be wearing this. It goes with your hair. Young man, you just want me to have this flower? You don't know who I am? Well, that doesn't matter. What matters is that flowers seem to cry out to be worn by you. <laughs> Young man, I'm Miss Jones, Mr. Bigley's secretary. No, you can't be. I mean, you just can't be. Why not? Well, from Bud Frump's description of you, I mean, you're not a frightening person. Thank you. <laughs> if it's not out of place for you to say so, Miss Jones, I believe you're a very attractive person. What did you say your name was? Uh, Finch, ma'am. F-I-N-C-H. How is it I've never seen you around here before? I'm not supposed to deliver the executive mail. That's his job, Bud Frump. Um, F-R-U-M-P. Well, thank you for the flower. You're a very interesting young man. I'd like to make an appointment with the boss at around three. I'll check on it, Milts, and I'll let you know. Ah, flowers. You got yourself a new boyfriend, Jonesy. This was given to me by a very nice young man. You should know him, Finch. Yes? Finch, this is Mr. Gatch. Uh, how do you do, Mr. Gatch? Mr. Gatch is a very good man for you to know. His department is very oh, yes, important. Yes, I know all about Mr. Gatch. He's in charge of plan systems, interdepartmental evaluation, as well as pre-promotion and promotion on uh, into a multi-level level. Say, Jonesy, this is a smart one. I didn't even know I did all that. <laughs> Very fine man, Mr. Gatch. I hear that he has an opening in his department. Ah, uh, yes, but he hasn't been able to make up his mind. Well, thank you for the flower. <laughs> Hiya, Jonesy. Miss Jones, bud! So, Rosemary, Finch, I was... where are you going? You've got to pick up the second delivery. Right, old bud, old buddy boy. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, thanks for the flower, Rosemary. Uh, thanks for the flower. You gave my flower to Miss Jones. <laughs> well, surely you, do, you don't begrudge an old lady for a moment of happiness. Well, I guess it is important for you to be nice to Miss Jones. <laughs> I'm glad you understand. We'll see you later, Rosemary. <laughs> outside line. No, this call is not personal. I'm calling my mother. Thanks. I swear, when I'm running the show around here, I'll clear out the whole... Hello? Mother? Bud! Now, listen, mother. I've just found out something very important. There's going to be a new head of the mailroom, and I want the job. You've got to call Aunt Gertrude and... I know I'm next in line, but there's a new fellow here that has me worried. Oh, you know, he comes in on time, never goofs off, he's polite. You know, a real rat. Yes, what do you want, Miss Jones? Your wife is calling. My, my wife, uh, 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 t tell her I'm busy. Uh, tell her I'm in the meeting. Tell her I'm out. Put her on. <laughs> Hi, Gertrude, I'm glad you called. What's on your mind? I am busy. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, Gertrude, I can't help but out there. The head of the mailroom should pick his own successor. I can't switch signals in the middle of a play. It'll upset the entire team. 
And if I interfered, that would be considered nepotism. Nepotism. That's when your nephew's a fool! <laughs> Miss Jones! Huh? I told you that speaking to my wife upsets me. Well, JB, you told me to put her Never on. Never mind. I, I need something to calm my nerves. Where's my, um, you know? I put it in the back of your right hand bottom drawer. Thanks. There you are, my lovely lady. Shh, don't speak. It's just you and me. Yes, Mr. Tumbo, I've already started sorting. Finch, as head of this entire mailroom, I would like to say that I'm very pleased with your work. Well, thank you, Mr. Tumbo. You really have an inborn gift for mail rumory. Thank you. That's a great honor coming from you, sir. Hello? Mail rumory. No, mail room. Just a minute. It's for you, Twimble. Mr. Brett and personnel. Oh, ah, this may be a very important call for some of us. Hello? What's the idea? What's the idea of what, bud? You know, trying to butter up Twimble. Well, believe me, it won't do you any good. Just because I'm being nice to you, man, doesn't mean I have to have an angle. If anybody's going to get his job, you know... Oh, I've got you, Mr. Brat. Thanks very much. Well, boys, it looks as if they're going to promote old Twimble to the shipping department. Congratulations! <laughs> Who's going to be the new head of the mailroom? Now, I won't say until it's official, but they're going to leave the decision up to me. Now, Twimble, he says... The mailroom is the nerve center of this mighty organization. Now, you have been a very good mailroom head, and we want you to choose your successor. We want you to choose him on merit and merit alone. That's not fair. I'm going out for a smoke. <laughs> smoke? He's going to call his mother. Well, that's not going to help him if I have anything to say about it. No, I have someone else in mind for this job. Uh, Mr. Twimble? Yes? You've been with this company a long time, haven't you? Oh, a long, long time. Uh, last month, I became a quarter of a century man. Wow, that's beautiful. Gee, a quarter of a century. A quarter of a century. How long have you been working in the mailroom? Uh, 25 years. Yeah, it's not easy to get a medal like this. It takes a mix of skill, diplomacy, and bold caution. When I joined this firm as a brash young man, well, I said to myself, now, brash young man, don't get any ideas. Well, I stuck to that, and I haven't had one in years. You play it safe. I play it the company way. Wherever the company puts me, there I'll stay. But what is your point of view? I have no point of view. Supposing the company thinks? I think so, too. What would you say if maybe, well, I wouldn't say. Your face is a company face. It smiles at executives, then goes back in place. The company furniture, oh, it suits me fine. The company letterhead is a valentine. Anything you're against? Unemployment. When they want brilliant thinking from employees, that is no concern of mine. Suppose a man of genius makes suggestions. Watch that genius get suggested to resign. You play it the company way. All company policy is by me, okay? But how can you rise up to the, the junior? Top? Have no fear. Whoever the company fires, I will still be here. Looks like you found a home. Oh, it's cozy. Your brain is a company brain. The company washed it and now I can't complain. The company magazine. A boy would style what punch. The company restaurant. Every day, same lunch. Their haddock sandwich, it's delicious. I must try it, sir. Early in the week. Do you have any hobbies? I've a hobby. I play gin with Mr. Rat. And do you play it nicely? Get nicely, still he blames.
blitzes me in every game like that. Why? Cause I play it the company way. Executive policy is by me, okay. How can you get anywhere? A junior, have no fear. Whoever the company fires, I will still be here. You will still be here. Year after year after fiscal. Never take a risk all year. <laughs> well, uh, let's get back to work, boys. They may be promoting me, but till then, the mail must go through. Yes, Mr. Twimble. Oh, uh, hiya, bud. How's your mother? What mother? What mother? Hello, men. Well, Twimble, it's all set. As of today, you're officially head of shipping. Well, thank you, Mr. Brat. Now, let's talk about your success. Hey, Brat, have you heard from my uncle today? No, bud. Now, <laughs> go ahead, Twimble. Your shoes are going to be hard to fill, but who have you picked to fill them? Well, Mr. Brad, I've given it a great deal of thought. You know, pro and con. Well, and I think your man is young Finch. Congratulations, Finch. I'm going out for a smoke. Uh, thank you, but I can't accept. Are you turning this job down? Sir, I believe there is a man who is better qualified, a man who has been here longer. Gentlemen, I recommend <laughs> Bud Frump. What? You're kidding. What? Bud Frump? Well, something, I mean, surprise-wise. I'm going to go call my mother and tell her. I don't understand. Well, you see, Mr. Tomo, no one who's taught me a lot. I mean, with this whole... Hello? Yes, JB, this is Brat. Well, uh, I understand your problem, JB. Actually, uh, we had had someone else picked out for the job, but the young fellow we picked turned the job over to Bud. He thinks Bud is better qualified. No, he doesn't seem to be out of his mind. He was actually explaining about it when you called. Go ahead, Finch. You see, Mr. Tumbo, the great thing that you've taught me is that no individual is as important as the whole company. He says no individual is as important as the whole company. The whole team is greater than any uh, single player. The whole team is greater than any single player. The whole crew is greater than any one oarsman. The whole crew is greater than any one oarsman. The whole salad is bigger than any one piece of lettuce. The whole salad is... Oh, you can hear him. The whole omelet is bigger than any one egg. Yeah! Isn't that great, JB? Sort of chokes you up, doesn't it? His name? It's Finch. F-I-N-C-H. F-I-N-C-H. Yeah, well, I'm gonna keep an eye on him myself. See you later, JB. Finch, you got me off the spot with JB. You're welcome, Mr. Brat. I appreciate it. Twimble, good luck. Uh, say, Mr. Twimble, wasn't there some mail I needed to take to Mr. Gatch? Gatch? Gatch. 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 Say, I just remembered, Mr. Gatch is looking for a junior executive in his department. He is? I'm going to talk to him about you. Oh, by George, ethical behavior always pays. Finch, you did a very wise thing. I did what was right. My mother was very happy. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the new head of the mailroom, Bud Frump. Yay! Thanks, Ponzi, old man. Good luck, Bud. Now, Finch, come along. I want to talk to you. He sure amazed me. I'm still wondering why he did this for me. Oh, yeah, well, so am I. I still think my original choice of man was best. Now, wait a minute, Twimble. Ponty okayed it. Well, I know, bud. I know. It's just... We'll uh... have no reneging. I was promised the job. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute, bud. Look, I have been head of this mailroom for a long, long time. 25 years. And I just want to be sure things are done right. I know what you mean, Twimble. From now on, I'll... I'll... I'll play it the company way. Wherever the company puts me there, I'll stay. Whatever the company tells him that he'll do. Whatever my uncle may think, I think so too. He's teeming with company pride. I've conquered that overambitious rat inside. Old Bud is no longer the front he used to be. I pledge to the company sweet conformity. I will someday earn my medal, 25-year employee. I'll see to it that the medal is the only thing they'll ever pin on me. I'll never be president, but there's one thing clear. 
As long as my uncle can stand me, I will still be here. We know the company. I'm so proud. I'm happy. Trump will play, it's the company. Trump will play, it's the company. We'll play it the company way from. Come on, everybody. It's a celebration. I want to invite all of you to have lunch on me. Yeah! Ladies and gentlemen, I have another announcement. Mr. Gatch has decided to take Young Finch here into his department as a junior executive. Wait a minute! Just a minute! That lunch is Dutch! In fact, it's canceled! Wait a minute! <laughs> so what's this I hear about? Uh, Ponty, that's wonderful! Um, wonderful! Uh, I told you to have patience. <laughs> you were right, Rosemary. Uh, you should have someone around all the time to help you think things out. Maybe I should. <laughs> Ponty, I'm always available. Gee, you're sure wonderful, Rosemary. I hope one of these days I can show my appreciation in- Lunch! What? Oh, I, I said lunch. What about lunch? I'd love to. <laughs> love to what? You said what about lunch. Gee, I thought you'd never ask me. Now let's see, where will we go? Hmm, say I know. There's a little tea room, a very cute place, called the Hungry Tea. Uh, it's very reasonable. I'll, I'll grab my things and meet you here. Uh, uh, Rosemary, that's not what I meant. I'm, what about lunch? Not what about lunch. <sighs> Say, Finch, how's the young junior executive feeling? Uh, fine, Mr. Gatch, fine. Hey, tell you what, why don't I take you to lunch up on the executive club? Uh, me in the executive club roof? Yeah. Hey, now that you're a, a junior exec, I can put you on my expense account. Well, thank you, Mr. Gatch. Uh, let me grab my coat. All right. Hey, I'll see you at the elevator. Rosemary, I've got a surprise for you. Mr. Gatch is taking me to lunch on the executive club roof. To lunch? How do I look? You look fine, Ponty. Just fine. Thank you. Uh, have a good time. If you have followed the simple instructions exactly as outlined, you should by now be a junior executive. Congratulations. Nothing can stop you now. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. Of course. Yes. Well, Gertrude, I don't have time for all this nonsense about Bud. I know blood is thicker than water, but Bud Frump is thicker than anything. <laughs> I will promote him when I'm ready. Now, you listen here, Gertrude. The next time Bud complains to his mother and she calls you and you call me, you're all fired! Yes, Miss Jones. There's a young woman on the line who insists on speaking with you. She says, <clears throat> it's poisonal. <laughs> what she wants, what's her name? She says you'll know. Oh, 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 well, um, well, uh, uh, put her on, put her on. Hello? Oh, now you knew I wouldn't forget. I'll take care of everything. One moment. Miss Jones, give me Brad from personnel right away! You be here tomorrow. Uh, fine. Uh, bye bye Brad, JB, I wonder if you could do me a favor. There's this young girl, wants to be a secretary, a... Uh, 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 she's an old friend of the family's. Uh, her, her father was a classmate of mine at Old Ivy. Uh, she's a bright girl, got a good head on her shoulders. Her name's LaRue, Hetty LaRue. Can I help you, honey? Graham. 
You don't understand, miss. You see, I'm Bud Frump, J.B. Bigley's nephew. Oh, how do you do? I'm waiting for Mr. Brown of personnel. I'm a secretary. I spotted that the minute you came in. Oh, thank you. Of course, I'm new at this and all. Miss Rue? Yeah, I mean, yes. I'm Bert Br <coughs> I'm Bert Brat, personnel. Sorry to have kept you waiting. Oh, not at all. This is I who am late. No, not really. Oh, yes, I was very naughty this morning. You see, I'm still not accustomed to early arrival. I understand. Well, uh, if you'll step into my office. This oh, this is Miss Smith, my secretary. How are you, dear? Fine, dear. Uh, Mr. Brat? Mr. Brat? Yes, Mitty? I have to get some new tax withholding blanks. You, you do that. Now, Miss LaRue, if you'll come with me, we'll get your particulars and... 39, 22, 38. Ooh, I win the pool! Boy, isn't she so Thin? Yeah, <laughs> Gentlemen, a word, please. Let's see, Brad, I need a new secretary. Oh, yeah. Gentlemen, oh. Miss LaRue will be assigned according to normal procedure once her qualifications have been determined. <laughs> Gentlemen! Gentlemen, a secretary is not a toy, no, my boy, not a toy. Do fondle and dandle and playfully handle in search of some puerile joy. No, a secretary is not, definitely not, a toy. Good morning. We wouldn't have it any other way, Mr. Brat. Mr. Brat? at F.A.O. Schwartz. <laughs>
A secretary is not a tinker Yes, Mr. B. By the way, you left your golf clubs in the office. Tomorrow is Saturday, and you're playing with Mr. Womper, chairman of the board. Oh, yes, well, I'll be staying in town tonight. I'll pick him up in the morning. And you ask me to remind you about your college alumni association? Oh, yes, well, send them the same check. I get a kick of thinking of their faces when they get that fat check from old least likely to succeed. Very well, Mr. B. Say, JB, there's a phone call. Your wife. My wife? Ugh, I'll take it in your office. That's all, Miss Jones. Good evening, Miss Jones. Ponty, how's the young junior executive? Fine, Miss Jones. Good. Thanks to the wonderful help and advice I've been getting from you. I'm glad our little talks have proven valuable. They sure have. <laughs> By the way, good luck tonight. Good luck? In the bowling tournament. I hear that you're the best bowler on the ladies' team. <laughs> Oh, how sweet of you to be interested in a thing like that. <laughs> I'm fascinated by the hobbies of the people I like. Say, do you want to come watch us bowl tonight? I'd love to, but I have to work tomorrow. On a Saturday? Nobody around here works on a Saturday. You're a very interesting young boy, Ponty. You'll go far. <laughs> well, thank you, Miss Jones. That means a lot coming from you. You being Mr. Oh. Bigley's secretary and all. Oh. He's the man I, man I most ma want to emulate. He's so thoughtful and kind. I heard him wanting uh, to send a check to his old college association. Harvard, isn't it? Harvard? Don't let JB hear you say that. He's a groundhog. But what college did he go to? Old Ivy. Old Ivy? Yes, they're the groundhogs. Well, good night, Ponty. Uh, good night, Miss Jones. Don't work too hard. Uh, don't worry, I won't. Hello, stranger. Uh, hi, Ruth. Hi, Smitty. Hi, Ponty. Been a long day, hasn't it? Sure has. I, I haven't seen you since you got your new job. I've been pretty busy. <laughs> been a long day. Yeah. Say, Rosemary, where are you having dinner tonight? Oh, well, that depends. On what? <laughs> On where I'm having dinner. Huh. <laughs> Secretary and the clerk, not very well acquainted, not very much to say, but I can hear those two little minds ticking away. Now she's thinking, I wonder if we take the same bus, and he's thinking, there could be quite a thing between us. Now she's thinking he really is a dear. And he's thinking, but what of my career? Then she says, oh, um, uh, and he says, uh, well, it's been a long day. Well, it's been a long, been a long, been a long, been a long day. He were more of a flirt. And he's thinking, I guess a little flirting won't hurt. Now she's thinking, for dinner we could meet. <laughs> and he's thinking, we both have got to eat. And she says, Achoo! And he says, Gazoontai. Thank you. Well, it's been a long day. Well, it's been a long, been a long, been a long, been a long day. Hey! There's a yummy Friday special at Stouffer's. It's a dollar ninety vegetable plate. And at the bottom of the ad, oh, not bad. Service for two, three fifty-eight. 
to make a bargain, make a date. Wonderful. It's fate. <laughs> now she's thinking, what female kind of trap could I spring? And he's thinking, I might as well forget the whole thing. Now she's thinking, suppose I take his arm. And he's thinking, well, really, what's the harm? Then she says, hungry? And he says, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's been a long day. Well, it's been a long, been a long, been a long, been a long day. Blithering, blathering. You've been complaining to your mother again. She wants you promoted. Why not? Other people are being promoted. Well, I told your Aunt Gertrude that. How oh, dare you! Good evening, Mr. Bigley. Oh, good evening, Miss LaRue. Uncle Jasper! I told you never to call me that around here! I'm sorry, JB. Now, don't you have something you should be doing? I was just going to get my jacket and go home. Good! How do you like your new job, Miss LaRue? It's a big, fat nothing! Darling, don't talk that way around here. I thought you were gonna make me a big businesswoman like Helena Rubenstein or Betty Crocker. So what happens? I am stuck in this stenographic pool with no one to fish me the hell out! Shh, Angel, these things take time. You need to learn. Yes, Miss, in a large operation like Worldwide Quickets, there are many multiple facets which are important to the scheme of, of things. Hetty, I promise you. I gave up a wonderful job. Had cigarette girl at the Copa. But the surroundings, you said you hated all of those men making advances. It's no different here in big business. At least at the Copa, when I got pinched, I got tipped. A girl can't bend over to pick up a pencil here with confidence. You mean someone has been bothering you? Who, Hetty? Just tell me who and I'll... Yes, miss, in a large operation like Worldwide Facets, there are many multiple wickets which are important to the scheme of who pinched you. I don't care about that. Look, you do not keep your end of my bargain. Sweetheart, I meant every word. I'll tell you what. I'll meet you over at your place in ten minutes. We can talk it over there. <laughs> no! But, but Angel! Yes, miss, in a large operation like Worldwide Wickets, there are many multiple facets which... <laughs> Why don't you go home? I'm waiting for the elevator. Why don't you walk down? It's 30 floors. Why don't you jump? <laughs> Very pretty girl, Miss LaRue. Oh, oh yes, uh, I'm just trying to make her feel more at home. She seems to be a rather shy girl. Yes, well, you go ahead, JB. I'm meeting mother for dinner. She loves having dinner with me. I tell her everything that happens all day at the office. Now he's thinking. The kid could really put me through hell. And she's thinking. The kid could even name the hotel. And he's thinking. I wondered if he dare. And she's thinking. There's blackmail in the air. And he says. It's a hold up. And she says. Down. Wait a minute. Fine. You're promoted. Well, it's been a long, been a long, been a long, been a long day. Well, it's been a long, been a long, been a long, been a long day. Ha!
Looks all spick and span, but I guess some slob will come dirty it all up. Okay. Good morning. Oh. oh, is it morning already, sir? Good grief, man. Have you been here all night? No, oh, I just had to finish up a few things, sir. By George, uh, I'm sorry, your name slips my mind. Uh, Finch, sir. F I N C H. Oh, uh, Finch, yes, I've heard good things about you. Uh, from my scouts. Well, thank you, sir. Uh, you, you know, it's, it's good to see someone in there carrying the ball. You, you make me feel a bit guilty. I just came in to get my clubs. I have to play around today with old Wally Wamper. He's um, chairman of the board, you know. I imagine one has to do that every once in a while. Yes, well, don't push yourself too hard, Finch. There are limits. Don't worry, sir. I'll just go get my clubs. Right, sir. Hmm, <laughs> What is that you're humming? I, I, I didn't realize I was humming, sir. You were humming the old Ivy fight song. Did you go there? Are you a groundhog? Well, sir, I... Uh, Out with it, boy! I know some men have an inferiority complex because they didn't go to Yale or Princeton. You're not ashamed of old Ivy, are you? Not a bit, sir. That's the groundhog spirit. What year are you? F Finch, when did you graduate? I'm sorry, sir. I was just thinking about the big game today. We're playing the chipmunks. Oh, that's right. I hope those chipmunks don't give us too much trouble. I'm sure that we'll take them. Now that Chernowski's knee is much better. Oh, Chernowski's the dirtiest player we got. With him in, the whole team's morale should pick up. Even though we won't be there in person. We'll be cheering for him in spirit, right? Right! Groundhog! Uh, groundhog! <laughs> Stand firm and strong, grand old Ivy, hear the cheering throng. Stand old Ivy and never yield. Rip, rip, rip the chipmunk off the field. When you fall on the ball, and you're down there at the bottom of the heap Down at the bottom of the heap Where the mud is oh so very, very deep Down in the cruddy muddy deep Don't forget, boy! That's why they call us... They call us Groundhog! Groundhog! Stand, old Ivy Stand from and Groundhog! Rip, rip, old rip Ivy. the chipmunk the cheering throng Stand Old Ivy God bless you And never yield Rip, rip, rip The chipmunk off the field Wow, sir, that was, that was very fun, sir. Thank you. I enjoyed that. I'll just, um, go get my clubs. Right, sir, of course. Uh, rip. Rip the chip. Oh. Oh. What is that you're 26, doing? 27, 28, 20. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I just want to finish uh, this row. Oh, uh, well, I'll be damned. Um, I knit too. You do, sir? Oh, yes, it's great for my nerves. Uh, no one knows but my secretary, Miss Jones. You, you've met her. Yes, I, I, I've met her. What's this going to be? Well, sir, I thought I'd make it a birdcage cover. A 
birdcage cover. I've never made one of those, but how do you like this? Oh, that's beautiful, sir. <laughs> you know, I feel sorry for men who don't knit. They lead empty lives. I like the way you finch, Fink. Think Fitch. Uh, think uh, Finch, yes. Uh, say, what's your ambition in this outfit? What's your heading? A bright fellow like you must have it all figured out. Well, sir, if I'm ever fortunate enough to get in a position where I would get to choose where I want to be, I want to do something real, something you can really dig your teeth into. Solid, down to the earth, advertising. Advertising? Well, son, I wouldn't want that for an old classmate of mine. It's too tough, too insecure. Why, this place has gone through 15 new advertising managers in the past year alone. Poor devils disappear about one a month. But why is that, sir? I fire them. But surely, if you had a man who had ideas, well, he could swing it. <laughs> ideas! I hire all of these men who are supposed to have these brilliant ideas, but none of them will ever do what I tell them. No, son, you stay where you are. It's a damn good department of... Uh, by the way, where are you? Uh, Mr. Gatch's department, plans and systems. Oh, Gatch, good man, knows what he's doing. You stay there and I'll keep my eye on you. Yes, sir. <clears throat> oh, well, uh, here you are, sir. I've got to get this finished before midnight. Midnight? That's the groundhog spirit. Groundhog! Groundhog! Stand, old Ivy, stand firm and strong. Rip, rip, rip the chipmunk off the field. Groundhog! <laughs> This is JB. Say, what are we running around here, a sweatshop? <laughs> We're working that boy too hard. Who? Finch. F-I-N-C-H. The poor devil worked here all weekend. I ought to know. I was there with him, working side by side. The lad needs help. Well, first of all, I want him to have an office of his own. Deserves the best you have available. Oh, but nothing fancy. Don't want him getting ideas. Hello, Ponty. Oh, come on in. What do you think? Your first office? It's beautiful. It is nice, except I did want my name on the door, but I decided not to ask because there's no door. <laughs> it's beautiful. I can only stay a minute, but I just wanted to tell you I had a good time the other night. Me too. I really enjoyed the conversation. It was very... Well, I guess I talked the whole time. <laughs> I liked it, but just one thing, Ponty, about what happened later. I mean, when we said goodnight. Well, it was our first date, and I don't want you to get a wrong impression of me, and, well, I guess it's only natural for a fellow to try to get fresh with a girl and make a pass at her, but you didn't do anything. I had to get up early. Sir? Oh, miss, uh... Miss the room, honey. Please, uh, come on in. A secretary was ordered to be assigned to you. I'm your assignation. <laughs> you didn't tell me you were getting a secretary. I just found out myself. Oh, well, happy dictation, Ponty. Bye. Well, Miss LaRue, go ahead and take a seat. Thank you. Miss LaRue. Just, just call me Hetty. I think that perhaps in a business Yo, relationship. You? Excuse me. Choosing a secretary can be fraught with peril. Take a good look at the young lady who has been assigned to you. If she is so attractive that you feel things are too good to be true, be very careful. It may be that one of the big men in the company is interested in her career. There's a simple test for this. Check on her secretarial skill. The smaller her abilities, the bigger her protector. <coughs> Mr. Theroux, uh, take a note for me. This is to Mr. Gatch. Dear Mr. Gatch, uh, pursuant to our discussion... Wait a minute! 
Are you trying to catch a train? What are you taking this down in? Long can. It's safer. I make up for it when I type. How fast do you type? Like a jackrabbit. Twelve words a minute. <laughs> Miss LaRue, what was your last position? I was in the tobacco business, but then Mr. Bigley, Mr. Bigley. he got me interested into Wicket, so I matriculated myself into business school, and here I am. Yes, here you are, aren't you? Go ahead, dictate some more. I'm gonna like this job. Actually, Miss LaRue, let that letter wait. Could you take this to Mr. Gatch? He's my boss. Mr. Gatch? Yes, and Hetty, personally. All right, Charlie. <laughs> Mr. Gatch, Mr. Finch's secretary is outside and she'd like to see you personally. Have her come in. And I'll go get her. Mr. Gatch. Yes? Uh, yes? Oh. I'm Mr. Finch's secretary. He asked me to give you this. Say, what are you doing tonight? I have a date with a gentleman friend. Oh, come on. You're in the big time now. Stop playing around with the small fry. No! Mr. Finch's office. One moment, please. It's for you. Production. Hello, this is Finch speaking. Yes, uh, Mr. Gatch? No. He was transferred to one of our out-of-town offices. Uh, where? Venezuela. <laughs> Jet, we're getting a new vice president in charge of advertising. Oh, Never mind. You know what a fellow by the name of Ovington, Benjamin Burton Daniel Ovington. B-B-T-O? <laughs> Say, I'll bet that's why JB hired him. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're throwing him a reception tonight. In the executive club on the roof. Yeah. yeah. I wonder how long this guy will last. Who knows, but uh, we're going to give him the full treatment. Anyway, ask your secretary to come. We're asking some of the executive secretaries to act as hostesses. Okay, brat. BBDO. <laughs> Rosemary, I had lunch without you. Where have you been? <sighs> Smitty, I've been made secretary to the new advertising manager. Oh, good. What's he like? I don't care about him. But this means that I'm invited to the reception this evening, and Ponty will be there, too. Smitty, I've been dreaming of a chance like this. Ponty's never seen me all dressed up glamorous. Do you know what this is? Your lunch? Uh, Smitty, this is the answer to how to succeed with Finch. It's a new dress. Oh, it's just beautiful. I hope it works. Good luck, Rosemary. <sighs> Thanks, Smitty. You know, I think maybe I'll get a new dress for tonight, too. Uh, good idea. I hope you're very popular at the party. Maybe I will be at that. I'm thinking of starting a secret rumor that I'm a kleptomaniac. <laughs> <laughs> I slipped out this afternoon and bought some love insurance A most exclusive dress from Gay Perry It's sleek and chic and magnifique with sex beyond endurance It's me, it's me, it's absolutely me And why one guy this irresistible hair is so original I'm wearing tonight <laughs> I'm wearing tonight especially for him this irresistible hair is so original all paid for and mine <laughs> I must look divine, especially for him. 
suddenly he will see me and suddenly he'll go dreamy and blame it all on his own masculine whim never knowing that this irresistible hair is original so temptingly tight <laughs> i'm wearing tonight especially for him for him <laughs> original I'm wearing tonight <laughs> she's wearing tonight and I could spit <laughs> some irresponsible dress manufacturer just didn't play fair <laughs> I'm one of a pair and I could Irresistible, Paris original. Oh, Slinky with sin. Already snuck in, and I could die, and I could kill her. Oh, this irresistible Paris original. I could spit. Grandma, you have to get a new dress. <laughs> Hello, girls! 39 bucks I hand out for something to make me stand out. And suddenly I've gone into mimeograph. Some laugh. This irresistible hair is original. Patty, will you have a drink? I never touch anything alcoholic before 5 p.m. It's 10 after 5. Which way is the food? Right over here. I'll have a double martini. Here he is, boys and girls. Uh, you know our advertising department has been in some trouble lately, but I finally think we have the fellow from our Venezuelan offices to help put Worldwide Wickets back on top. Ladies and gentlemen, Senor Benjamin Burton, Daniel Ovington. Benjamin, please. Be Benjamin. <laughs> Thanks, boys and girls. I just wanted to say that I'm very proud to be joining the Worldwide Wicked family. I don't know much about wickets, but what I do know is about advertising. And advertising theory can be summed up in one sentence. Shove it down the throats with a soft cell. Good sound thinking. Well, and I'd like to say that I was like... But well, I'd like to say... You call this a double martini? There's no olive in it! I, but, I'd like to uh, say that... JB wants for you to take Miss LaRue home. She doesn't seem to be feeling well. I'm uh, feeling fine. You feel terrible. I'd like to say that... Hiya, Finchie. Let's dance. I'm already dancing with Rosemary. Furthermore, I'd like to say Come on, that... Eddie. No games. JB wants me to take you home. Come on, Hetty. What I need is a shower. JB wants me to take you home. No, I'm going to JB's office. He has a private shower. I'll take a shower and then I'll come back to the party. Oh, okay, Hetty. You have a nice shower. Thanks, bud. You know, you're cute. Not as cute as Finch, but you're cute. Not as cute as Finch? Going up to the party feet? 
Will you tell Mr. Finch I want to see him down here? Tell him it's important. Okay. Old sexy Hetty is in there taking a shower, and I've got a little something up my sleeve. Something that'll put little old Finchy. Hello, Finch. What's this all about, bud? JB wants you to go to his office. He'll meet you there. But I was just talking to JB. He didn't say anything. I guess he didn't want to say anything in front of Ovington. You know how it goes, right? Do you think your uncle's considering? I to don't know anything. I only know that I was told to tell you to go to his office. Well, I haven't seen his office anyway. Thanks, bud. You're welcome. Now to get my uncle. Goodbye, Finchy. Hello, Uncle Jasper. Ole! It's wonderful. Someday, someday. Yes, I am. Mr. Bigley? No, it's me. Uh, hi, Hetty. Uh, I was supposed to see Mr. Bigley here. Mr. Bigley, he's not coming. Somebody gave you a bum steer. You should have known it was a rib. Well, I think I'd better get What's back. What's your hurry? Uh, I just think I'd better get back to the party. It's more fun down here. I think I'd better. You're anxious to get back to that rosemary, aren't you? Are you stuck on her? Rosemary? Uh, she and I are just good friends. That's very sensible of you. An up-and-coming young chap like yourself shouldn't be tied down. I've been watching you, Buster. You're going places. Mm-hmm. Venezuela. <laughs> now look, Hetty. Wouldn't JB just die if he walked in and found you kissing me? Frankly, I'd rather that he didn't. You'd better, Finch. If you don't, I'll tell JB you did. Okay. But just once. Rosemary. Huh? That kiss. What about that kiss? Rosemary. It is highly insulting to think of two broads in the middle of one kiss. I know, but something's happened to me. I can't explain it. Oh, Finch, you're in love. That's right. A Finch is in love. And I must have been in love with her ever since you took my particulars. You found that out by kissing me? Yes, Hattie. Suddenly there is music in the sound of your name. Rosemary. Rosemary. There is wonderful music in the very sound. If we kissed, what a crescendo. Not to be missed. As for the rest of my lifetime program, give me more of the same. Rosemary. music in the very sound of your name. Oh. Conti, I heard about a prom talking at the party. Now where is she? Rosemary, something wonderful just happened. What I, are you talking can't about? Can't you hear it? Suddenly there is music in the sound of your name. I can't hear a thing. Rosemary. No, oh, it's all around me, like, 
like a beautiful pink sky. Now look here, J. Pierpont Finch, have you lost your mind? Rosemary, darling, will you marry me, J. Pierpont Finch? Now I hear it! I hear it! I hear it! Suddenly there is music in the sound of your name. J. Pierpont! If we kissed, what a crescendo. Not to be missed. As for the rest of my lifetime program, give me more of the same. Rosemary, I've been so wrapped up in everything, it's though I'm seeing you for the first time. And I'm seeing you for the first time. You have on two different kinds of lipstick. Mine and hers. Rosemary, you don't understand. This is very easily explained. No, I understand. Well, don't let me keep you. Kiss her again. Take her home for the weekend. I don't care. What do I do? Let's do what she said. Hold, get back in there. You have nothing to hide. Yes, you do. Now keep it hidden. You snake. Now kiss me. Ahem. Oh, oh, oh. I'm, I'm, oh, so, I, I, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm Mr. Bigley. I insisted, Mr. Finch. Show me your office. Oh, well, uh, I, I, I actually just came into watch shop. <gasps> um, excuse me. Um, uh, Finch, I owe you an apology. What for, sir? Uh, never mind that, but I want you to know I still do not approve of what you were doing when I first walked in. I care for nothing like that between executives and their secretaries. But Miss Pilkington isn't my secretary. Oh, yes, good point. <laughs> B, we've been looking for you. Yeah, I haven't even finished my speech yet. You made a fine speech. Yes, Mr. Ovington, very fine speech. Mr. Ovington, this is Mr. Finch of Plans and Systems. How do you do? Anyway, you know, I have a lot of, I have very interested in advertising. Well, I've read a lot about you in Fortune magazine. Thank Mr. You. Bigley, did you know that Mr. Ovington was an all-American halfback in college? Really? Where did you play, Ovington? The greatest little college in the world. Northern State. <laughs> a chipmunk! I sure am a chipmunk. Did you see the way we murdered the groundhogs last Saturday? Ovington, I am not a bigot. I've hired men from all colleges, tigers, bulldogs, trojans, badgers, and gophers, but never a chipmunk! Your resignation is accepted. <laughs> rip, rip the chipmunk off the field! Chipmunk, run! Chipmunk, run! Dip, dip, dip! Chipmunk! That was a narrow squeak. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, I was very surprised myself. Oh, Finch, it's a good thing you're on the ball when it comes to advertising. Say, JB, what are, what are we gonna do about a new advertising manager? Finch, maybe it happens to be fate you be here at this very moment. You've always wanted this rotten job, think you could handle it? Well, I, I, I don't know, sir. Uh, if there's one thing I admire in a man, it's humility. Finch, you're now vice president in full charge of advertising. Me a vice president. Now, JB, I don't want to question your decision. Finch is very bright, but he's inexperienced. I like him! I like him! I think we've hit on something big here, Brat. This boy is loaded with great ideas. Ideas? Tell us some of them, Finch. Come on, Finch, I wear those ideas. Well, sir, I... Put uh, up or shut up, son. Sir, I, I... Get on the ball or you'll be out of here like a shot. Sir, I want to give you a clear-cut campaign. Say, JB, the plans board is supposed to meet the day after tomorrow. Finch could tell us his ideas then. Fine. 
Finch, you've got 48 hours to make an advertising presentation. Better get going. You're now vice president in full charge of advertising. Up to now, I'm pretty dissatisfied with your work. Littering, blathering, coke burning. Well, I don't care what they say. I'm vice president now. Vice President Finch. What's next? <clears throat> Girls, um, you can come in now. Oh, would you? Thanks, Rosemary. Rosemary, I've got a surprise for you. Mr. Bigley just made me vice president in charge of advertising. Oh, congratulations. Can I be a secretary? That'd be wonderful, Hetty, but Rosemary is going to be my secretary. Guess I'll go back to the steno pool. I'll have to wait for that pigeon till after he's married. Rosemary? I'm going to be your secretary? Well, sure, you were Mr. Ovington's secretary. And what makes you think I'd be your secretary? I'd rather die. But Rosemary, advertising is such a, such a hard job, I can't do it alone. Rosemary, I need you. You need me? Well, all right then. I'll be your secretary. Good. I'm glad that we got that all settled. Finch, aren't you forgetting something? Uh, you're right. <clears throat> Hello, operator. Uh, could you give me the person who paints names on office doors? Finch, aren't you going to kiss me? Kiss you? I can't. Why not? You're my secretary. whose slogan has been for over a hundred years, Worldwide Wickets for a Wider World, proudly presents in living color and an interest for better television programming, the Worldwide Wicket Treasure Hunt. What is all that? I tried for a little production value. Now quiet, Hetty's coming on now. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for, the Worldwide Wicket Treasure Girl. You know, it's beginning to get to me. I'm starting to wonder where the treasure is myself. Yeah, where is it, Finch? No, nobody knows but JB and myself. Right, JB? Uh, right, Ponty. <laughs> Hello there! I am about to give you the first clue in the World Wide Wicket Treasure Hunt. In ten different places in this great country, there are 5,000 shares of stock making 50,000 shares in all. Oh, ah. And now for the first clue. The first clue. The first clue is west of the sun. Hold on there, treasure girl. This sweet cat is holding a Bible. Would you place your right hand on it for me, please? <laughs> treasure girl, can you swear that you yourself do not actually know where the treasure is hidden? Can you swear on that, Miss LaRue? Is this the real Bible? Yes, of course, Miss LaRue. <laughs> What's the matter with her? She looks surprised. Well, she is. Hetty didn't know about this. I wanted this part of the show to be completely spontaneous and unrehearsed. That can be very dangerous. I think it's very effective. Miss LaRue. I do. <laughs> and Miss LaRue, can you swear that you yourself do not actually know where the treasure is hidden or that there has been no trickery or dishonesty in part of this show? Can you swear on that, Miss LaRue? Oh, now we're all going to get in trouble. Why, JB? Only you and I know where the treasure is hidden. She doesn't know. Does she? Let's just watch the program. <laughs> Miss LaRue, can you swear on that? <laughs> I do not wish to take a bum rap. I will not swear false witness to perjury. I do know where the treasure is hidden. I found out last night. There is treasure hidden in all of the world's wide wicked buildings right now. <laughs> How to 
to handle a disaster. In every businessman's career, there are times when things go a bit wrong. We have many suggestions for coping with these little problems. However, should you be the cause of a disaster that's really disastrous, we suggest that your best bet is to review the first chapter of this book, How to Apply for a Job. Found Finch yet. Where's Finch? I don't know, brat. Well, JB wants him as soon as you can find him. He's hopping mad. Rosemary, have you seen Ponty? No, Miss Jones, and I'm so worried about him. So am I. He was a nice boy. Was? What will they do to him? Somebody's head has to roll. No, no, Ponty. Pon we'll think of something. Won't you, Ponty? You have the cool, clear eyes of a seeker of wisdom and truth <laughs> yet there's that upturned chin and that grin of impetuous youth I believe in you I believe Oh, Rosemary. Oh, Ponty! Oh, oh, so glad you're here. Where have you been? Just walking the streets thinking. You have a bruise on your head. Oh, it's nothing. I got it last night when they threw me out of the saloon. Why did they do that? Well, because I didn't buy anything. Oh, the brutes. Why don't you just go home? I can't. I've got to go in there and face the music. The chairman of the board is in there. I figured that. What are you going to do? Do? What does a man do when the world has collapsed around his ears? Nothing. Ponty, I know with that mind of yours. No, I'm putting that mind of mine away. I'm going to go in there and make a clean breast of everything and go back to what I was before I came here. And what were you? An exterior decorator. I can't even tell you the truth. I was a window washer. So what? I don't care what you do. I walked out on you once. You, you did? Well, I'm not leaving you again. But you can't be the wife of a window washer. That's no life for a woman. While I'm up there wondering if I'm ever going to land safely. Now listen to me, Finch. Finch! JB wants you. I thought I'd wash up first. He wants you now. Can I at least say goodbye to Rosemary? Go ahead. <laughs> goodbye, Rosemary. Come along! But, oh, Rosemary, I'm sorry. I wish none of this had ever happened. Ponty! Monty, why should you go in there and face those, those monsters? Go ahead, run away, escape. I'll pretend I didn't see you for all Lang Syne. No, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to face them. Besides, I thought you'd be happy if they killed me. If I could only be sure. <laughs> well, all the key men are here, JB. You all know Mr. Wally Womper, the board. Now, Wally, uh, before we go any further, I, I know I am the president of this company, the man who's responsible for everything that goes on here, but I'd like you to know that none of this is my fault. Th there, there, there's one bright side to this, this whole thing, Wally. You'll, you'll be happy to know we have someone dependent on. Have you found Finch yet? They're bringing him in. Good, good. Wally, you, you'll soon see where the responsibility for this whole thing lies. Um, now, when, when he gets here, I'll do the talking. This... This is a very, very slick youngster, Wally. He's here, sir. JB, I would never like Never mind, to... I'll do the talking. Uh oh, by the way, you've never met a Wa Wally Wampler. This is the chairman of the board. How do you do, Mr. Wampler? No speeches, Finch. Now, I'd like you to sign a simple little letter of resignation saying you'll take the blame for everything that has happened. I'd be happy to, sir. What? I, I said I'll, I'll, I'll do what you say. You're sure this isn't another one of your, your tricks? Sir, I'm through with all that. This company has been pretty good to me, so I'll go ahead and I'll take the blame for everything. 
Go back to what I was before I came here. Uh, what, what did you do? I was a window washer. No kidding. I was a window washer myself. You were? Well, what do you think I was? A rail splitter? <laughs> College man? So, you were a window washer. Yes, Mr. Womper. Call me Wally. Okay, Wally. All right, Pierre Pont. Call me Ponty. All right then, Ponty boy. It's been a long time since I've had someone around here that I could talk to. So how'd you get into this business? Well, sir, I had this book. Yeah, me too. It was a book on how to succeed in business. <laughs> Mine was much better. I booked bets with all the other window washers. Cleaned up a bundle. Should have stayed in that business. Now look at us. Eight buildings wrecked, stock down five points, and we're the laughing stock of the industry. I know, Wally. It's, it's ghastly. Now, Ponty, I can understand a college man pulling a blunder like this, but not no window washer. Now, this idea of Now, hold it, Wally. If there's one thing I won't do, is take credit for another man's idea, especially when he's the boss's nephew. Nephew? Told me you hired your nephew. Oh, ne oh, nephew. Well, uh, he he he's not he's not my nephew. He's he's my my wife's nephew. I know this might seem like nepotism, Wally, but I have never shown him any favoritism. In fact, I hate him. But you love his ideas. No, but when Bud brought the treasure hunt to me, I thought it was a lousy idea. Yeah, and when yeah, Finch yeah. brought it to me, I thought it was lousy, and I told yeah. Finch it was a lousy idea. Then why did you buy it? It seemed like a good idea. <laughs> treasure hunts and treasure girl. Uh, well, uh, I dressed it all up. Finch can't deny that the idea for the treasure girl was his. You the tell him, JB. Yes, sir, that was my idea. And quite a good one at that. But who picked the bubble-headed tomato? Aha! Uh -huh. Wally, I don't want you to get the wrong idea. This is a very nice girl. You ought to talk to her. I intend to. I think I have the whole picture. Now the question is what to do and who to do it to. Now, Wally, before you make any hasty decisions, I'd like to say a few words. About what? Humanity. You see, even though we're all part of this cold corporate setup, deep down, there's flesh and blood. We're all brothers. Huh. Some of us are uncles. Now you may join the Elks, my friend, and I may join the Shriners. Yet other men may carry cards as members of the diners. Yet others wear a golden key or small Greek letter pin. But I have learned that there's one great club that all of us are in. There is a brotherhood of men, a benevolent brotherhood of men, a noble tie that binds all human hearts and minds into one brotherhood of men. Your lifelong membership is free. Keep giving each brother all you can. Oh, aren't you proud to be in that fraternity, that great big brotherhood of man? Now, Wally, I want you to remember that before you consider firing Mr. Big. Well, who's considering that? You see, I know what's on your mind. You want to clear the whole crowd from top to bottom. That's the obvious choice. But stop and think. One man may seem incompetent. Another not make sense. While others seem like quite a waste of company expense. Hey! They need a brother's leadership. So please don't do them in. Rem her mediocrity is not a mortal sin. We're in the brotherhood of man, a benevolent brotherhood of man. Oh, aren't you proud to be in that fraternity, that great big brotherhood of man? Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> no kidding, is there really a brother of man, a benevolent brotherhood 
of man. Yes, sir, yes. Our noble tie that binds all human hearts and minds into one brotherhood of man. Yes, Your lifelong membership is free. Keep a game in each brother all you can. <laughs> oh, aren't you proud to be in that fraternity? That great big brotherhood of man. Miss Jones! Miss Jones, what are you doing? What's going on? Oh, that noble feeling oh, oh, oh. feels <laughs> like bells are peaked. Down oh. with double dealing. Oh, brother, hey. you, you got me. Me, I got you. Skeep, but I'm super excited. No, no, here! Hey! hey Come on, boys! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> oh, that's it, man! Don't hold back now! Look at us go, boys! <laughs> changes at Worldwide Wickets. I'm speaking to you in my new capacity as Vice President in charge of Psychological Adjustment and Employee Morale. <laughs> now, Mr. Tackerberry is the new Personnel Manager. And now, I would like for all of you to hear a word from our hard-driving, hard-working President, J.B. Bigley himself. I can now truly state that Worldwide Wickets is now stronger than ever. And I feel a lot of the credit should go to a certain bright and very loyal young man. Get out here, Finch. As many of you know, this youngster's rise to the top has been spectacularly rapid. And for a moment, I began to think he was after my job, but luckily for me, he didn't want it. <laughs> no, JB, your job is much too tough for me. <laughs> but if any do, it should go to a great man and a great humanitarian. Gentleman, Mr. Wally Womper. Here, here. Incidentally, uh, Mr. Womper has a charming wife with him here today. Let's get them both out of here. Mr. and Mrs. Womper. Excuse us. Coming through. <laughs> now, Mr. Womper, being a newlywed and all, didn't feel like making any big speeches, but I've got a surprise announcement to make about him. He and his wife are going to take a honeymoon trip around the world. Oh, sweetie. Tell me! I didn't know! <laughs> but what the heck? It's a good idea. I'll concentrate on you. Uh, that, Wally, who's going to be the new chairman of the board, as if I uh, didn't already know? Well, but before I accept, uh, <laughs> I'll have to consult Mrs. Finch. Rosemary, your husband is calling you. Rosemary, I've got a big decision to make. They want to make me chairman of the board. What do you think? Darling, I don't care if you work in the mailroom, if you're chairman of the board, or if you're president of the United States. 
I love you. I say that again. I love no, you. No, before that. Uh, Miss Jones, take a wire to the White House. Watch out. We're <laughs> yeah. the company way. Chipmunk off the 